and residential cabinet making. Visit their website, allstyleconstruction.ca. The time brought to you by All Style Construction is 6 o'clock. This is Higher Ground Gospel Radio, owned and operated by Higher Ground Tabernacle Ministry. We are located at 3601-118 Avenue, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Streaming live 24-7 at hggradio.ca or download our HGG Radio mobile app from the Google Play Store or Apple Store. Higher Ground Gospel Radio, reaching you at the highest mountain. HGG and the Radio. God bless you, Pastor Rod Charles here from Bethel Apostolic Stony Plain. We want to welcome you to revival that is happening in the house. 
March 23rd and 24th. Rise Up Revival is coming to the house of Bethel, and you have to be there. There's going to be worship. Amen. There is going to be deliverance. And most of all, we're going to hear a word from Elder J.G. Williams. And if you want to be a part of that renewal and refreshing, you have to be here. Remember, March 23rd and 24th, you have to be in the house so that the Lord can bless you. God bless you. Make sure that you're here. Bring your outreach and evangelistic teams and register online at www.bacsp.ca. God bless you, and I love you. This will be at 501-251 Avenue, Stony Plain, Alberta. For more information, visit their website at www.bacsp.ca. Disability Empowerment <laughs> Foundation, in partnership with Great Commission Foundation, presents Disability Awareness Musical Concert under the theme, The Gifted and the Lifted, at the Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG Champions Parish, 18811-111 Avenue, Edmonton, on Saturday, April 6, 2024, from 1 p.m to 4 p.m. Admission free. That's the Disability, Disability Awareness, Awareness Musical Concert, Concert April 6, 2024. 2024. See you there. serve a powerful God, my friends, one that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. A special good morning to you and you and you and you. Welcome to the Hope of Glory morning show with yours truly, Rashane Douglas, the Christ in me, the hope of glory, giving praises and honor to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. We serve a God who was, is, and is to come. We serve a God that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that's working in you, according to the power that's working in me. So this morning, we have a power pack to show lined up for you this morning. Of course, coming up in a little while, we're going to open with prayer. We're going to make way for a devotional. Of course, we have been speaking about the Holy Spirit, understanding, knowledge, wisdom. You know we have been speaking about these three important words, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Of course, we have been speaking about the Holy Spirit. And this morning, I want to dive a little bit inside the presentation, the presentation aspect. And we're going to talk about that a little bit this morning about presentation. How do you present yourself as a believer, as a person or a carrier of the Holy Spirit? We're going to dive into that this morning. Let me welcome our friends joining us at hggradio.ca, our friends listening to us on the HGG Radio mobile app. So good to have you on board. We give God praise for you and you and you. I want to declare to somebody this morning that it is well with you. I know the weapons are forming, but it is well with you. I know the doctor gave you a negative report, but it is well with you. I've seen doctors give people negative report, and then maybe later on down, they said, oh my goodness, I made a mistake. This thing that I accuse you of having, you don't have the thing. So sometimes it's not everything that your doctor tells you, you should accept it. I remember this lady shared her testimony that, you know, she was about to have a miscarriage or the doctor told her that she had a miscarriage. But the lady said, you know what, I'm not believing God for this miscarriage. I've had so many before, but this time around is like her fate increased to another level. And she said to the doctors, you know what, I, I believe that there's a child that is in me. 
and she came, you know, to one of her services the other day, and she shared her testimony that indeed God showed up for her. Thank God she did not believe what the doctor said. The doctor made a mistake. Remember, the doctor is only a human being, you know, and we're capable of making mistakes. Our track record shows us that we make a lot of mistakes from time to time. So don't believe everything that your doctor tells you, all right? Always remember to take it with a grain of salt or you know, allow the Lord to give you that, that assurance that your doctor is telling you what they're telling you. So it's not everything. It's not every news you should accept. You should not conform to everything that's happening around you. That's what the Bible says, that we should not conform to the things of this world, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So it's not everything you hear, it's not everything that you should run with. You know, sometimes, you know, a lot of us, we fret over rumors, we hear something and it becomes a gospel and we start to worry, we start to fret when factually it is not true. So I really want us to be careful in this season of the messages that we listen to, the voices that we allow to be in our space. We have to be careful in this season. Always remember your ultimate goal is to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. If somebody comes to you and they say to you, the Lord says to tell you so and so and so and so, maybe the Lord would have already told you personally. And that person coming to tell you something, it's like a confirmation. So don't don't just run with a, a, a prophecy. Somebody comes and they prophesy to you, oh, I see you driving a car or I see you in a big house or I see you having children. Let the Lord um, confirm that with you. Of course, in a little while, we're going to open with prayer. And then, of course, we're going to make way for our devotional. And again, I want to say good morning to our friends on Facebook, our friends on YouTube. And, of course, our friends listening to us at hggradio.ca or those listening on the HGG Radio mobile app. It is now time for us to pray. Again, let me say good morning to you, Joan Mullings, Michelle Bennett, Kathleen Andrews, Arlene J, Diane Brown, Lira Chambers, Rosemary Riley, Nicole Myers, Claudette Hopwood, um, Joycelyn Richards, Lalitha Wilby, Pat Henry. Blessings to you, Hyacinth Mackison, Ilone Taylor, um, Rosemary Rose, Mary James, Jacqueline Anderson, Teresa Hamilton, Chubb Checkers, Pamela Lil Givens, and of course, Hope Briscoe. All those who are on, remember to invite a friend, tell a friend to tell a friend. Also remember to subscribe if you have not yet done so. Remember to like the video. It's important that you do so. If you're watching now, just hit the like button this morning and just allow the Lord to continue to expand our family here at HGG Radio. I want to say good morning to you, Cynthia Wallin. Um, Joyvis Thomas, blessings to you. How are you doing? How is everybody doing this morning? Let me know. You can leave your comments in the chat this morning. We look forward to hearing from you, our family. It is now 13 minutes after 6 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. Maybe it's 13 minutes or 14 minutes after the time or the time zone in which you are located. Thank you so much for making it Higher Ground Gospel Radio. Yours truly, Rashane Douglas is your host, taking good care of you. Together we go all the way until 10 o'clock. Of course, a promo will be coming out soon. It will be no longer 10 o'clock. It will be from 6 to 8 o'clock, but it's going to be 6 to 8 o'clock. And it's going to be very powerful. And I know that God is up to something in this season. It is now time for us to pray. Father, we exalt you this morning. Father, we humble our hearts before you. You are the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper, the light in the darkness. You're the God that is always providing. You're the God that is always making a way, even when there seems to be no way. Even when we don't have the finances, you're still paying our bills. You're still making provision for us. You're still opening up doors for us. So God, with that assurance, we put our trust in you this morning, knowing that they that trust in you, they, they shall be like Mount Zion, and they shall not be removed, but they shall abide forever. Continue to lead, direct, and guide us as we continue on this topic, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. 
And this morning we're speaking about the Holy Spirit. Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit will lead us into all truths this morning. God, let there be revelation of your word. Let it be all of you and none of Roshane Douglas. Let your people be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed in your going out, blessed in your coming in, and of course, blessed when they're listening to HGG Radio. Thank you, God, for Pastor Clive. Pray, God, that you'll strengthen the man of God and all those who are connected to this ministry, all the announcers, all the workers in the background. Father, remember them this morning. Thank you, God, for the listeners. Bless them abundantly. In Jesus' name we pray. And the listeners of HGG Radio, we say amen and amen. Now, it's a very interesting topic that we have, we have been discussing. We have been speaking about knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. And, you know, there are times when, you know, we listen to a lot of preachers nowadays and including myself, I'm not exempted. But what I really don't want is to give you information. I don't just want to give you information. I want to give you revelation of the information that I share with you. In other words, each information I share with you, I want to break it down. I want for you to understand the information and also I want you to apply it. So it makes no sense, you know, you going into, for example, for those who went to high school or primary school or college or, you know, what is it, or university or if there's another higher level of education beyond university, which I don't know about. I've never pursued it so far, so I'm not sure if there is another thing um, ahead of new university. But a lot of you are going to look up me strange this morning. I'm just messing around. But what I'm basically saying to us is that there are times when we're giving, given information, but we don't understand the information. You can be given information in French. You don't speak French, so how is it that you're going to understand the information you're given? A lot of times we... A lot of us, we put on a blindfold or we close our eyes when it comes on to topics or, for example, subjects like math. A lot of us don't like maths. I remember, you know, I, I shared this um, story when I was going to community college. There was a subject called, it was an introductory subject, like a mathematics subject. They call it college math. And I remember we were doing college math. We were in an exam. And I know this young lady, she didn't love math, and she was in the exam. And all I could hear the young lady, she was mourning in the exam, like she was giving birth to a baby. And each time I could hear <sighs> And she turned to another side and she gives that sound again. <sighs> and I'm saying, what's happening? And the invigilator was, you know, questioning her and asking her what's going on with her. You know, the exam had her a certain way because she didn't love math. So there are times when there are some subjects that we, we play a blind eye to. In other words, we don't understand. It doesn't matter how many explanations you give, you won't understand these subjects. And I always remember going to school, I always share with you that I did well with the numerical subjects. But the subjects that required a lot of reading... I wasn't a, a fan of those subjects. I didn't like reading literature books. I remember, you know, I apologized to my mom. She listening, Mom, I apologize to you. I remember when you purchased those um, um, literature books, I did not read them. I tried my best, but, you know, I didn't read the literature books that you purchased. So I really hope I can pay you back, you know, when the Lord blesses me abundantly. I try my best to repay you for wasting your money in that area. And I'm just being truthful. So this morning we're speaking about knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. And this morning we have been speaking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you and I. So there are times when we use phrases like, you know, the Holy Spirit is coming in the church. The Holy Spirit is going to move through the congregation. Really and truly, the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of you. So sometimes we have to be careful of how we phrase things, the things that we say. The Bible declares, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 
So when we think about spirits, spirits require a body in order to function in the earth realm. So they say that man is a tripart being, body, soul, and spirit. I believe there's a scripture when Paul was um, saying that, I'm trying to remember that scripture, but it's not coming, it's not coming. Uh, oh my goodness. Something about completely. Let the Lord your God completely, body, soul, and spirit. You know, I really hope one of my bright students can pick on to the scripture that I wanted to refer just now. But the, but the human being is made up of the body, the soul, and the spirit. Now the spirit occupies the body. So there are times when you'll hear people being possessed. It's like there is a, um, a foul spirit or a demonic spirit um, possess that person's body. In other words, it, it, it can possess them through their, their different gates. And the body is made up of different gates. Your nose gate, your eye gate, your ear gate. So the, there are different ways you can allow an evil spirit to enter your body. I remember yesterday we were speaking about bad mind. There are times when we allow certain spirits to enter us based on what we see. So we see somebody else prospering and we bad mind that person. So automatically what you do is that you're no longer um, glorifying the Holy Spirit. It's like you're putting the Holy Spirit aside. Now your focus is on bad minding your neighbor. So in other words, the Bible declares that if you regard iniquity in your heart, then the Lord will not hear your prayer. So this morning, we're speaking about presenting our bodies, presenting ourselves. How do we adorn ourselves? And there are times when dress code becomes a very important topic in the body of Christ. A lot of us may say, hey, you know, um, you know, there is this topic about skirt and pants and hat and no hat. I'm not speaking about that type of adornment. I'm not speaking about that type of presentations. I'm not speaking about specifically to the skirt. I'm not here to talk about skirt. I'm not here to talk about pants. I'm not here to talk about hat. I'm not here to talk about a certain color here or but what I'm speaking about is how we present ourselves. The Bible declares in um, Romans chapter 8, let me see if I can go there this morning, as the Lord leads me. We're speaking about presentation. And I know the scripture, but I really want, it's not Romans chapter 8, it's actually Romans chapter 12. So let's go there um, this morning. Romans chapter 12. Um, let me see if I can pull up the full chapter here. No, the Bible says that we should present ourselves a living sacrifice. Um, the NIV version says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, listeners of HGG Radio, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies. Notice it says here, your bodies, a living sacrifice. And it says, holy and acceptable and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So one of the components or one of the requirements of the Holy Spirit is that you present your body a living sacrifice. Your body should be blameless. Your body should be holy. It should be pleasing to God. The Bible also reminds us that your body is the temple of the living God. So the Holy Spirit dwells inside your temple. So sometimes we think about presenting ourselves the first thing we're thinking about, we're thinking about our outward appearance. But God doesn't look at the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. I really hope I'm getting somewhere this morning. I didn't plan how the Lord is leading me. But God looks not just at the outward appearance. He looks at your heart. What's, on, what's happening on the inside? I always share this with you that the reason why I fell in love with my wife, she's beautiful on the outside, mark you, you know, normally, you know, before you get attracted to a person's internal beauty, 
then first you have to be attracted to their external beauty. So what caught me first was her external beauty. But when I drew a little closer to my wife before she became my wife, I realized that she was not just beautiful on the outside, she was beautiful on the inside. Based on how she dealt with me at the time, based on the things that I saw coming out of her, and I'm saying, wow, she's a gem. It's like sometimes when you find a diamond in the midst of the dirt, it's like, it, it's like a rare thing. So what I found coming out of her was something rare. Like it wasn't, you know, it wasn't normal. So sometimes, you know, a lot of us, we get so caught up in looking at a person's um, outward appearance and we get deceived. So sometimes a devil can dress up in, in a beautiful adornment. Now some persons will dress beautifully. They will wear the longest skirt. They will put on, you know, I remember the other day I was, you know, preaching at a church here in Canada. And I was at the Aberian Church. Thank you so much, Pastor Anderson, for giving me the opportunity to share. And I remember saying to the, to the congregation that I remember back in the day, there used to be this hairstyle that, you know, the Christian woman would wear. I don't know if you remember that hairstyle. There's this hairstyle that's, whenever you see this hairstyle, then you know it's a Christian woman. I really hope somebody, anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? I really wish I could share a picture with you. But there was this hairstyle that, you know, like everything is in one. Like everything and like there's this plot in, in the middle. I don't remember what it looks like. I don't remember how to explain it to you. But whenever I saw that hairstyle, I knew it was a Christian woman. And, you know, whenever you see somebody with that hairstyle and you see them in a long skirt way down to their ankle. And, you know, back in the day, not sure if it's happening now. I haven't seen that hairstyle in a little while. But I remember back in the day, as soon as you saw somebody, yes, man, wrap or pin up. <laughs> My friend ties him. Yeah, so so basically, you see people dressing up like this, but yet still, their lifestyle, it is not good. You know, how they deal with people. If something happens on a bus or in the public, they're ready to cuss off the driver. The driver, you know, maybe they, they press the buzzer, they're on a bus, they press the buzzer, and the driver made a mistake and passed their bus stop. They're ready to cuss off the driver or to use explosives or... I'm not saying that they curse like bad words and stuff, but you know what I mean. They're ready to trace the driver and tell the driver some bad things. So don't be deceived by somebody wearing a long skirt, somebody dressing in a suit, because the devil wears suits. The devil wears beautiful dresses and broad hats. So it's not because you wear the broadest hat in church. It means that you're, you're, the, you're, you're an angel or you're anointed. Again, I said, I'm not here to talk about skirts. I'm not here to talk about pants. I'm not here to talk about hats. I'm not here to talk about hairstyle, how long your hair is, whether they cut your hair or whether they keep your hair. I'm not here to speak about that. But what I'm here to speak about first and foremost is the Holy Spirit. Now, the second thing is that the Holy Spirit dwells in a body. So before you start thinking about your outward appearance, like the clothes you put on, you have to first deal with your internal, your internal attire. You know, your heart has to be dressed up a certain way. Your heart has to be presented. It has to be clean. And that is why I love the part where David said, creating me a clean heart. He didn't say creating me some clean clothes and some pretty sneakers or some nice shoes. He said, creating me a clean heart. So my friend here, um, Pat Henry says, it's the condition of your heart that matters when it comes on to the Holy Spirit. Beautiful, Pat. Thank you for sharing that. So your condition of your heart, how you adorn your heart, how you, you know, deal with that side, which is the most important side for the believer. Again, let me say good morning to you. If you have just joined us, welcome. We're speaking about the Holy Spirit. We're speaking about presenting ourselves. So when we deal with the internal, 
then we start to focus on the external. So first of first and foremost, your internal is the priority. Your external is secondary. Now, when it comes on to the external now, you know, my wife would always say to me, as you see me now, I'm, I'm fully beard up. Um, my hair needs to cut. I need to groom myself. No, this is secondary. What's happening on the inside, which is the heart, that's primary. That's the priority. So before you think about going out in the street, first you have to get your heart right, your internal, your internal um, presentation. Because the Holy Spirit lives internally. So before you think about externally, for example, grooming your hair, you know, putting on a little makeup, a little touch up here and there, um, fixing your hairstyle, um, buying a nice dress, buying a nice suit. First, you have to deal with the inside first. That's the priority. So the Bible here says in Romans chapter 12, and it says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy that you present or offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, holy and acceptable to God. This is your true and proper worship. So let's not get conformed to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and prove what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So in other words, there are times we just have to humble ourselves. The Bible says, humble yourself underneath the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due season. Again, this morning, we're looking at the Holy Spirit knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. We have to be careful of, you know, they always say this, we have to be careful of wolf in sheep clothing. I've seen some pictures. Um, let me see if I can find one of those pictures for you. Um, I've seen this before. Let me see if I can find one for you. Like, let me find one. Like wolf, let me see if I can type it in. Wolf in sheep clothing let me see if i can find something let me see if i can find something um i normally can see um some pictures uh oh my goodness i'm not seeing any now but uh, oh my goodness let me see if i can find one on the internet so i can show you what a wolf in a sheep clothes look like wolf in sheep clothing um let me see if i can pull some pictures up for you here um, so this is what, you know, a lot of um, graphic artists would do things like this to, to, to deceive us. So uh, this is an example of what a wolf in a sheep clothing looks like. Um, uh, let me see if I can share this screen with you to show somebody what a wolf in sheep clothing look like. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Let me see if I can pull that up for you. Okay, so... So this is what a wolf in a sheep clothing look like. You see the wool on the outside, but you can see the face of the wolf. The wolf. So there are times when there are people in our lives that look like this. You know, they have a look of innocence. But when you really get to know them, it's like a totally different person. So we have to be careful of just, um, you know, accepting or getting into... Um, a certain relationship with a person because of their outward appearance. So you have to be attracted to the internal. Outward appearance won't, you know, if you based your relationship, for example, those who are married, if you based your relationship on an on outward appearance, then automatically you'll lose interest in that relationship. Why? Because, for example, you, you know, if I could show you some pictures when I when I just got married, I was slim. I had, you know, I was slim. Yeah, yeah, Rashane. I was, you know, some people would say maybe Marga. But I was slim. I was a little bit thinner than how I look now. And if my wife was attracted to my outward appearance, 
then as soon as I start getting a little stomach and I no longer, my abs are no longer showing, then automatically what would happen is that she would be no longer attracted to me because my appearance has changed. I've gained a few pounds or maybe more than a few. So God doesn't look at your outward appearance. The reason why God loves you is not because of how tall you are or how short you are or how slim you are. It's because of your heart. Your heart wear. Not your external, but your heart wear. So I want us to get our hearts right. Get our minds in the right place. Persons are treating you a certain way and you want to tell them your mind, just hold it together. People are doing bad to you, but you keep on doing good. People are working evil, iniquity, and they're doing all manner of things to you, but you still do good. You present your body a living sacrifice. People want to see you dead, but you present your body a living sacrifice. They want you to backslide. They want you to leave the church. But you present your body a living sacrifice. And don't ever get I minded. A lot of times we allow, for example, positions in life to change who we really are. So don't allow, you know, a little money in the bank, you know, maybe a promotion on the job. Now you're no longer Brother Roshane, you're now Minister Roshane or Elder Roshane or Bishop Roshane or Apostle Roshane or, or Archbishop or Arch Apostle, whichever other um, titles. Don't allow the titles in front of your name to change who you are. So there are different things that we could look on when it comes on to presentation. You have to be careful that, you know, you have some pastors, if you make a mistake and call them by their first name or you don't, you don't read their bio. Have you ever been to some churches and um, normally whenever I'm asked to share at a church, they normally ask for um, a bio or what do they call it again? There's this other thing that they call it. What's it called again? I'm trying to remember. Um, somebody can just put it in the chat. I try to remember what they normally ask for whenever you're going to preach at a church. They normally ask you to send. It's something similar to a bio. I'm not sure if it's a bio. They normally use profile. So they ask you for a profile of yourself. And I always try to keep my profile short. I don't tell you from, you know, how many degrees and which college I went to. And, you know, I don't list out these details like that. Just saying that I'm a man on a mission for God. Uh, yes, it's your profile. So again, this morning, we're looking at the Holy Spirit. We're looking at the how we present ourselves. So the inward, the inward man is the priority. The external man is secondary. The external man is always also important. We have to groom ourselves. Not because you're anointed from head to toe doesn't mean that you have to be um, bearded like myself. There's a reason why maybe God would have allowed me to continually grow my beard without grooming myself. So I haven't groomed myself in a little while. So I have some here. You can see the little bald spot in the middle here. I'm thinking about, you know, growing my hair. I remember the other day I went to the barber and I told the barber, I'm trying to grow the hair on my head. The barber was like laughing at me, you know, because of the type of faith that I have, you know, but that's another story for another day. But sometimes I think about growing my hair, which as you see, you see what's happening here. There's nothing coming in the middle here, maybe a little on the side. So I'm thinking about keeping the hair on the side, but my wife would prefer that I just clean it all off. So, but adorning yourself Presenting yourself, grooming your hair, ensuring that you keep proper hygiene. Because I remember I was on this bus and there was a pastor preaching on the bus. And some young men were laughing at the pastor because the pastor's breath had 
alcohol smell on his breath. So it smelled like he was drinking rum. The pastor was on a bus preaching to unsaves or even believers, but he had rum on his breath. So your hygiene, your, for example, your breath, you can't be a person ministering the word of God and, you know, you, you have your, 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 your smell green. You have to present yourself. So even though we spoke about, you know, not our priority should not just be on the outward appearance. That's not the number one priority, but it's also important. I believe it's secondary. So when we deal with the internal first, now we focus on the external. You have to groom yourself. You have to fix your hair. You have to dress a certain way. You can't dress like the persons in the world a certain way. And you're trying to minister to people another way. So there are so many things. There are so many. This topic is not for me. I'm not the controversial type. So I can't go in depth as it relates to topic, how you should dress. But what I'm telling you is just the basic things. You have to ensure that you bathe. Ensure that you brush your teeth. To ensure that you wash your hair, groom yourself, present yourself, put on proper clothes. Don't go and don't look like, you know, the person on the street or living on the street. You know, you have to present yourself. The Bible says, present yourself. Holy and acceptable, pleasing to God. You're a representative of the kingdom of God. We are kings and queens of the kingdom. So you have to dress like a kingdom citizen. Walk like a kingdom citizen. So our presentation, again, is very important as believers. It is time for us to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning that you remind us that our body is your temple. And we should keep your temple in order. God, you are not the God of disorder. You're not the God of confusion. You're the God of order. You're the God who reminds us that if we regard iniquity or wickedness in our hearts, then you will not hear our prayers. You will not use us effectively. So God, we thank you this morning that our minds are renewed. That we will not just conform to what's happening in the world, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our minds. God, your word reminds us also that we should guard our hearts with all vigilance because out of our heart comes the issues of life. We thank you this morning, God, that our worship will flow to you. God, let our prayers go up to you unhindered by any satanic or demonic forces. God, we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. Thank you this morning, divine God, that your people will declare that the weapons of our, their warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through you to the pulling down of strongholds. We thank you this morning that your people will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not faint. Thank you, God, for showing up and showing off. In Jesus' name we pray. And the listeners of HGG Radio, we say amen and amen. I believe this is the final information on the Holy Spirit. We can go a little bit deeper. But I believe come this Monday, we'll be going into another topic. We're still on knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. So I really hope we understood that presenting ourselves outwardly is important and also remember that our inward appearance is our priority. Our external appearance is secondary. So let's get internally right. Let's fix ourselves internally. Allow the Holy Spirit to sanctify you internally. And we adorn ourselves externally. We practice proper hygiene. We practice grooming our hair as men. You know, we wear proper shoes. We don't just, you know, drag ourselves any and any way. Presentation is important. You know, normally if you're going to buy a product, um, 
or uh, for example if you go to a certain restaurant how they present the food to you it makes it attractive there are times you go to the supermarket and you're buying a product based on how they label the product based on how they present the product even when the thing inside of the package doesn't really taste good the presentation makes you it, it allows you to be attracted to purchasing this product so it's the same thing us as as believers we have to ensure that we present ourselves a certain way let's go to a break are you ready to amplify your message and reach hearts with purpose? Introducing HGG Advertising, your partner in spreading the gospel and connecting with the Christian community. Churches, Christian-based businesses, listen up. With HGG Advertising, you can reach your audience through powerful radio campaigns. Engage hearts, inspire minds, and grow your community with HGG Radio, which is already reaching 136 countries worldwide. We specialize in promoting Christian values and helping businesses aligned with faith-based principles. Whether it's a church event or your business rooted in Christian values, HGG Advertising is here for you. Connect with us and let's share your message with purpose. HGG Advertising, spreading the gospel, connecting communities. Email us today at ads at hggradio.ca that's ads at hggradio.ca or call us today at 825-343-4486 HGG Radio Calgary, join us on April 5, 2024 for an evening of praise and worship presented by MR Productions featuring Petra K from Jamaica Michael Reed from Edmonton. I know I'm blessed. Rex Uche, Inheritance Group, and Showers of Blessings Praise Team. Live in concert. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. Showtime, 7 p.m. at the Southeast Hope Assembly. 520 60th Avenue, Southeast Calgary. Adults pre-sold $35, $40 at the door. Kids, $15 at the door. Get your tickets at eventbrite.ca or call 780-284-3450. That's Come Worship the King, Calgary. See you there. Disability Empowerment Foundation, in partnership with Great Commission Foundation, presents Disability Awareness Musical Concert under the theme The Gifted and the Lifted at the Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG Champions Parish, 18811 111 Avenue, Edmonton, on Saturday, April 6, 2024, from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., admission free. That's the Disability Awareness Musical Concert, April 6, 2024. See you there, HGG. You're tuned to Higher Ground Gospel Radio. Of course, that's the Disability Awareness Musical Concert. It's going to be at the Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG Champions Parish, 18811 111 Avenue here in Edmonton. It's going to be April 6th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. And of course, HGG Radio will be a part of this great event that's happening and other great events that's happening here in side our beautiful city of Edmonton and its surrounding areas. Speaking of Edmonton, again, uh, let me say good morning to those who are, have just joined us. Welcome. There's also our neighboring community. We have Sherwood Park. We have um, we have St. Albert. And of course, we have Stony Plain. And speaking of Stony Plain, all roads lead to Stony Plain come next week, which will be the 23rd and the 24th, I believe. Let's let's listen to this one. Praise the Lord and God bless you. Pastor Rod Charles here from Bethel Apostolic Stony Plain. We want to welcome you to revival that is happening in the house. March 23rd and 24th, Rise Up Revival is coming to the house of Bethel, and you have to be there. There's going to be worship. Amen. There is going to be deliverance. And most of all, we're going to hear a word from Elder J.G. Williams. And if you want to be a part of that renewal and refreshing, you have to be here. Remember, March 23rd and 24th, you have to be in the house. 
so that the Lord can bless you. God bless you. Make sure that you're here. Bring your outreach and evangelistic teams and register online at www.bacsp.ca. God bless you, and I love you. This will be at 5012-51 Avenue, Stony Plain, Alberta. For more information, visit their website at www.bacsp.ca. Chapter 10. It is now time for us to get into the Word of God. We're going to be going into Zechariah chapter uh, 10, 11, and 12. I want you to listen, listen, and be blessed, my friends. We'll be back right after the, 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 the Bible reading. We, we have some great things to, to explore this morning. So stay tuned, my friends. Dreams. Zechariah chapter 10. I, the Lord, am the one who sends storm clouds and showers of rain to make fields produce so when the crops need rain, you should pray to me. You can't believe idols and fortune tellers or depend on the hope you receive from witchcraft and interpreters of dreams. But you have tried all of these, and now you are like sheep without a shepherd. I, the Lord All-Powerful, am fiercely angry with you leaders, and I will punish you. I care for my people, the nation of Judah, and I will change this flock of sheep into charging war horses. From this flock will come leaders who will be strong like cornerstones and tent pegs and weapons of war. They will join in the fighting, and together they will trample their enemies like mud. They will fight because I, the Lord, will be on their side, and they will crush the enemy cavalry. I will strengthen the kingdoms of Judah and Israel, and I will show mercy, because I am the Lord their God. I will answer their prayers and bring them home. Then it will seem as though I had never rejected them. Israel will be like a tribe of warriors celebrating with wine. When their children see this, they will also be happy because of me, the Lord. I will give a signal for them to come together, because I have rescued them and there will be as many as ever before. Although I scattered my people in distant countries, they won't forget me. Once their children are raised, they will return. I will bring them home from Egypt and Assyria, then let them settle as far as Gilead and Lebanon until the land overflows with them. My people will go through an ocean of troubles, but I will overcome the waves and dry up the deepest part of the Nile. Assyria's great pride will be put down, and the power of Egypt will disappear. I'll strengthen my people because of who I am, and they will follow me. I, the Lord, have spoken. Chapter 11. Lebanon, open your gates. Let the fire come in to destroy your cedar trees. Cry, you cypress trees. The glorious cedars have fallen and are rotting. Cry, you oak trees of Bashan. The dense forest has been chopped down. Listen, shepherds are crying. Their glorious pastures have been ruined. Listen, lions are roaring. The forests of the Jordan Valley are no more to be found. The Lord my God said to me, Tend those sheep doomed for slaughter. The people who buy and butcher them go unpunished, while everyone who sells them says, Praise the Lord, I'm rich. Not even their shepherds have pity on them. Tend those sheep, because I, the Lord, will no longer have pity on the people of this earth. I'll turn neighbor against neighbor and make them slaves of a king. They will bring disaster on the earth, and I'll do nothing to rescue any of them. So I became a shepherd of those sheep doomed to be slaughtered by the sheep dealers. And I gave names to the two sticks I used for tending the sheep. One of them was named Mercy, and the other Unity. In less than a month, I became impatient with three shepherds who didn't like me, and I got rid of them. Then I said... I refuse to be your shepherd. Let the sheep that are going to die go on and die, and those that are going to be destroyed go on and be destroyed. Then let the others eat one another alive. 
On that same day, I broke the stick named Mercy to show that the Lord had canceled his agreement with all people. The sheep dealers who saw me knew right away that this was a message from the Lord. I told them, pay me my wages if you think you should. Otherwise, forget it. So they handed me my wages, a measly 30 pieces of silver. Then the Lord said, Throw the money into the treasury. So I threw the money into the treasury at the Lord's temple. Then I broke the stick named Unity and canceled the ties between Judah and Israel. Next the Lord said to me, Act like a shepherd again, this time a worthless shepherd. Once more I am going to let a worthless nobody rule the land one who won't care for the strays or search for the young or heal the sick or feed the healthy. He will just dine on the fattest sheep, leaving nothing but a few bones. You worthless shepherd, deserting the sheep. I hope a sword will cripple your arm and blind your right eye. Chapter 12. This is a message from the Lord about Israel. I am the Lord. I stretched out the heavens. I put the earth on its foundations and gave breath to humans. I have decided that Jerusalem will become a bowl of wine that makes the neighboring nations drunk. And when Jerusalem is attacked, Judah will also be attacked. But I will turn Jerusalem into a heavy stone that crushes anyone who tries to lift it. When all nations on earth surround Jerusalem, I will make every horse panic and every rider confused. But at the same time, I will watch over Judah. Then every clan in Judah will realize that I, the Lord All-Powerful, am their God, and that I am the source of their strength. At that time, I will let the clans of Judah be like a ball of fire in a woodpile, or a fiery torch in a haystack. Then Judah will send the surrounding nations up in smoke, and once again the city of Jerusalem will be filled with people. But I will first give victory to Judah. So the kingdom of David and the city of Jerusalem, in all of their glory, won't be thought of more highly than Judah itself. I, the Lord God, will protect Jerusalem. Even the weakest person there will be as strong as David, and David's kingdom will rule as though my very own angel were its leader. I am determined to wipe out every nation that attacks Jerusalem. I, the Lord, will make the descendants of David and the people of Jerusalem feel deep sorrow and pray when they see the one they pierced with a spear. They will mourn and weep for him as parents weep over the death of their only child or their firstborn. On that day, the people of Jerusalem will mourn as much as everyone did for Hadad Rimon on the flatlands near Megiddo. Everyone of each family in the land will mourn and the men will mourn separately from the women. This includes those from the family of David and the families of Nathan, Levi, Shimei, and all other families. Praise the Lord and God bless you. Pastor Rod Charles here from Bethel Apostolic Stony Plain. We want to welcome you to revival that is happening in the house. March 23rd and 24th, Rise Up Revival is coming to the house of Bethel and you have to be there. There's going to be worship. Amen. There is going to be deliverance. And most of all, we're going to hear a word from Elder J.G. Williams. And if you want to be a part of that renewal and refreshing, you have to be here. Remember, March 23rd and 24th, you have to be in the house so that the Lord can bless you. God bless you. Make sure that you're here. Bring your outreach and evangelistic teams and register online at www.bacsp.ca. God bless you, and I love you. This will be at 5012-51 Avenue, Stony Plain, Alberta. For more information, visit their website at www.bacsp.ca. It's time to put on your Jesus, we're gonna blaze up some fire in here. We're ready. All right, come on, come on. Hey, hey, hey. Ole, 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 
your face. Life that's me, one that's me, fresh, happy and true. Many are called, chosen are few. God loves me and God loves you. Who God bless, no man can harm. When life gets rough, just pray for a God. And God bring you peace in the midst of the storm. God bring you peace in the midst of the storm. Many are called, chosen are few. God loves me and God loves you. Who got blessed? No man can harm. When life gets broke, just fear for a car. Gotta bring your peace in the midst of the storm. Gotta bring your peace in the midst of the My God is our king star. And he can fix anything. No matter what is your problem, just bring it all unto him. My God is our king star. And he can fix anything. No matter what is your problem, just bring it all unto him. You are healing. He can fix it. You are deliverance. He can fix it. You are the husband. He can fix it. You are the wife. He can fix it. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me, Lord. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me, Jesus. My God is a big star. And he can fix anything. No matter what is your problem, just bring it all unto him. My God is a big star. And he can fix anything. No matter what is your problem, just bring it all unto him. You are healing. He can fix it. You are deliverance. He can fix it. You are the husband. He can fix it. You are the wife. He can fix it. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me, Lord. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me, Lord. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me, Lord. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me, Lord. I am my warrior. A Christian warrior. With the weapon in my right hand. I am my warrior. A Christian warrior. Jesus, 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 Jesus,
Join us on April 5, 2024 for an evening of praise and worship presented by MR Productions featuring Petra K from Jamaica. Oh, I cross Michael Reed from Edmonton. I know I'm blessed. Rex Uche, Inheritance Group and Showers of Blessings Praise Team live in concert. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. Showtime, 7 p.m. at the Southeast Hope Assembly, 520 60th Avenue, Southeast Calgary. Adults pre-sold $35, $40 at the door. Kids, $15 at the door. Get your tickets at eventbrite.ca or call 780-284-3450. That's Come Worship the King, Calgary. See you there. My soul started to HGG Radio. Hey! Clap your hands if you really love Jesus. Clap your hands if you really love Jesus. Rock your body if you really love Jesus. Rock your body if you really love Jesus. song I can't play one time. Yes, sir. You really love Jesus this morning. If you really love Jesus. Just about nine minutes after seven o'clock Mountain Standard Time. Jesus. We do apologize for the absence of MPIAW. Jesus. But in the meantime. Oh, I cross over. My soul started to wonder. Hey, hey, hey. 
If you didn't know, now you know. Pedro K will be making her way over here in Edmonton <laughs> and over there in Calgary. Courtesy of Come Worship the King. Are you ready? Are you ready? The man of this morning. His name is Jesus. He's King of Kings and he's the Lord of Lords. He's the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Don't doubt him this morning. I want you to have faith in him. a very special guest joining me at this time and he's gonna be sharing his testimony just about 13 minutes after seven o'clock mountain standard time i feel like i want to squeeze a little bit of this one in this morning But in the middle of the night, when the pain was left and right, have you ever been in a situation when you feel the pain in the middle of the night and you're crying out to your God and you're saying, God, help me now when my bills can't be loud, help me now when everybody can't let me, help me now when the devil start fight me, help me now. Jesus, may I call you, help me now. Now, according to Luke 1835, We're calling on Jesus this morning to help us, to help us, even when we're feeling pain, even when the doctors gave us a negative report, we're still saying, God, help me now. The psalmist said, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence come it. My help, my help comes from the Lord, the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. We're here this morning inside of the Hope of Glory Morning Show. Normally we have for you MPIAW, but we're doing something a little bit different this morning. The man who you will normally hear from on a Friday, you get to hear from him. It's been a while. He's under the radar these days. He did a surgery recently, and thank God he's recovering steadily. And he's here to share a testimony with you this morning. We're speaking of none other. Everybody knows him. We know him. You know him. His name is Pastor Clive Atkinson. Good morning to you, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing good. <laughs> Giving God. Yeah. Giving God thanks for you. You know, you know, I know 
you can't stay away. I know you're trying your best to to stay in bed. You know, the doctor gave you some orders to stay in bed to get some rest. But, you know, I, I remember talking to you recently and you told me you were somewhere and I'm saying, oh my goodness, if only the doctor knew you were out and about, then the doctor would have called all the necessary authorities to get you home and get you back in bed. But I'm happy that you took the time this morning to come on and to join us this morning. What's on your heart? How are things going? The listeners want to know. We're seeing that you're okay, but we want to know what's happening with you at the moment. Over to you, sir. Well, you're, you're going to make Auntie Pat um, crucify me because every day she, she calls me and says, make sure you're in your bed. Make sure you're in <laughs> But no, I'm doing much better. Um, last week, man, I was, I was, I, 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 I could not move. I was in so much pain. And um, it was just, I, I can't explain it, you know. So I had a surgery and then it, it you know, the, 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 when I went in to do the surgery, not to do the surgery, just to do the follow-up, the gentleman said, no, I have to get you in right away, the quickest date. And they, they got me in like as quick as possible because the pain was so much. And I have a hernia and um, they, they had to go in and, you know, um, because it was bloating out my stomach. It was like almost like a golf ball. And he said to me, what you see on the outside is nothing compared to what's on the inside. He says, really? He's like, yeah, it's bigger. I'm like, oh, my God. There's the one, I was wondering why I'm in so much pain. So he says, no, I want you to come in right away. And, he, yeah, he he says, man, he said he doesn't even know how old. He said, usually they don't allow it to get so big. Usually they do a quicker surge, um, you know, quicker date and stuff like that. But here am I, you know, even though I was in the pain, he says it could have been worse. So, um, yeah, I went in. But, you know, it, it's been good. Um, last week, now I come home and I'm telling you I was in a lot of pain and, uh, you know, taking the medication. But I don't like medication, so I'm trying not to take the medication as often as they say because I'm trying. But, man, when the pain grip you and grab you and throw, throw you all over the place. I'm bawling to my wife. I'm like, oh, grab the, grab the pill, grab the pill, grab the pill. <laughs> so she would have, you know, she was my nurse. Oh, my God, she was my nurse. She, you know, she did it. She'd take the time off from work. And, um, of course, she stayed home with me. And you know, one day my daughters were home with me when she had to go and, Another day, my son was home with me if, if if they couldn't be there. So I always have somebody home with me. Um, yeah, I'm still not 100%. Um, I can't sit up for long um, because of how they cut your stomach. So it's like a C-section. So yes, I don't have no muscle in my stomach. So hopefully with all of this, I hope I, hopefully I can still work out and get my six-pack. <laughs> And if I can't get a six pack, I'm gonna draw it to the felt pen permanent marker. <laughs> but yeah, you know, um, but to do all of that, Minister Douglas, you know, I remember going to the um to the to the doctor the morning and I wanna testify this morning. Um right, and, right. I, I, and and Minister Douglas, we must serve God. We must serve God. The morning when I went in you know, they had me in the prepare in the room where they're preparing us um to go up to the um to the to the search to the to the theater. Okay. Yeah. Of course they give you they tell you you know, go through a whole bunch of stuff and um then of course Melody come in to <clears throat> came and she was there and they telling her what and what and what not to do and what to expect. And then after the preparation they give me the, this muscle relaxer get the muscle relaxer. Of course, your muscle feel like it's not even yours anymore because you can't lift yourself. You, you're like, why am I so weighty, right? So, I mean, you're still you're still with it and stuff like that, but I, now it's time for us to go to the theater so they bring, up, bring me upstairs. Man, I, I've never prayed like this in all my life. I was praying throughout the whole time. Like, I was praying... I'm like, you know, like the feeling that you get. And I'm not a type of person who is nervous about things. But the, the, it was a feeling of me not 
got to be conscious and know what's happening so you have no control when you really thought about it. Up to the time I was okay, I'm like, ah, I'm, a, I'm all right. I, I don't need to know what's going on and I'm good. But when you really get there, you're like, oh my God, this is happening. So anyway, I went upstairs and the, 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 the dead man came. He was my anesthesiologist and he talked to me. So to calm my nerves, I, I'm there telling him that I know a greater anesthesiologist. And he said, who is that? I said, oh my God, him and I have a great relationship. I says, I know him. Oh my God. He said, he put a man to sleep. He took a rib out of his side. <laughs> I told him about Jesus. You're not hearing me. Uh, and he looked at me and he's like, man, I've never saw it this way. He says, well, when he finished, he didn't leave a scar. The man walked whole because if there was a scar, you and I would have a scar today. There's no scar. And he took it out and he, he was, man, when I finished with the man, the man I said, yeah, you got to you gotta know who this man is. And the man, the man looked at me and says, oh, my God, I never saw it like this. I preached to him, Jesus, lying on my bed. While I was there, after I finished preaching to him, and he walked away, hear the devil. I've been thinking about bad medicine. <laughs> and I said, in the name of Jesus. And I walked in. So I right, lie down there, they came, all the doctors came, and they they brought me into the theater. And then, they, you know, when I went in there, I see nurses. I'm like, oh, my God, this is huge. There was like six of them inside of there. While I was in the room, they said, okay, I needed to move over to the to the table now. They, you know, so they, 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 they bring me over to the other table, start strapping me up. And I said, man, one piece of claustrophobic hit me. I'm like, Jesus, have mercy, me dead now. <laughs> so I told him, I said, can I just sit up for like two minutes? Can I sit up for two minutes? And I, so I said, the guy said, okay, okay. And they had buckled me off of the bed. And so I sat up and I'm like breathing. You, you know, every time I take a breath, I'm like, Jesus, Lord God, I'm going to dead. Lord, you have to do something this morning. I'm there, I pray, 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 I pray. I pray. And then this guy come over and say, okay, what's your name? And that he asked me the name and said, so I lie down. When I lie down on the bed, you know, my head was flat. I said, I said can you prop up my head a little bit? I saw in the room all of them that was gowned up and getting ready. You know, their, their scrubs, their green scrubs. There was a gentleman that came in and he stand at the door. But it's he, like he was far away from where... The door, the door, like I said, the door moved far. The door is way over there and he stand up. And then, the, and then there was another gentleman that came and he said to me and he hold me by my shoulder right here and says, we're here, we're here, we're here. You are right. We're going to take good care of you. Oh my God, I saw speaking tongues, Rev. Oh my God, I saw speaking tongues. The angel of the Lord came into the room and I know it was because they had uh, no ear, the, 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 the thing on their head. They were bareheaded, and it was two white, two white person, two white person. One standing up in a white scrub, and the other one, I didn't see what the other one was wearing. I just saw his head and his face, and he touched me on my shoulder, and, and, and he said to me, we're here. You're in good hands. Rev, I started speaking in tongues. The guy put the thing over my nose, and I don't know what happened afterwards. All I know, the angel of the Lord and this morning I was I got up and I and I said, you know what, I'm gonna go downstairs and come testify. <laughs> because we as the people of God need to know that God is real. And we need to know when the Bible said that thou art with me, we need to know that God is with us. Mm -hmm. And we do not serve God part-time. We must serve God full time. That's right. We do not serve God like, oh, you know, God is good some days and some days he's not hearing us and some days. No, 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 no. God is with you and I this morning. You just have to believe him and don't serve God. You know, sometimes we serve God as if, you know, it, you know, it's, it's a myth. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't, we don't serve God like it's a myth. You serve God. It, listen, it's a, it's a real, 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 real life experience that when you can look and see God is doing things in your life and you don't give God a B plan. God, if you don't come in this surgery with me, I don't know what I'm going to do. And God will send you um, an angel 
to come and comfort you in the midst of what you're going to pass through. But sometimes we're serving God, so, you know, and, and we don't, we're, we're not having these experience because of how we serve God. God wants us to serve him with everything. And David, you know, in Psalms 23, you know, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. When he said that, David meant it. How much time have we read these scriptures that says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You have, when you read it, you have to mean it and says, God, you are my shepherd and I shall not want. He said, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk, this is what I wear now. Yea, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, because I'm telling you, I thought I was going to die that morning. I was like, uh, oh God, this is it. But in the midst of all of that, I, I, you know, we're just worshiping in God. And man, I never speak in so much tongues. I think I have more tongues than Apostle Paul is that morning. <laughs> I was just worshiping God, worshiping God, worshiping God. And God just came through, comforted me. And says, I am here. I want to let somebody know this morning, still in a little bit of pain, still recovering, can't sit up too long, um, and I can't uh, lie down too long because I have to walk around to make the blood flow and <clears throat> stuff like that. So, But when I can't sit or stand too long, the Lord is with us. The Lord is with me this morning. And I want to let somebody know this morning that God is with you this morning, yeah. and you have to believe it. Even when you feel like, you know, uh, you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, you just have to remember that he is with you. You know, I, 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 when I was watching something, and I saw this chicken was walking through these dogs, and the, the, the scripture they put up, it said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the chicken said, I will not fear no evil. Yeah. I want to let you know this morning that God is with you this morning. And you, you just have to believe him. And the, the scripture verse that came to me, Rev, when I was there, it was, even if, even if he doesn't deliver, even if he doesn't come through, even if he doesn't, I'm going to worship him in spite of. So I'm there in the, in, in the, in the room, Rev, and I'm, I pray a repentance prayer. I pray, I say, God, if me not come back out, Lord, receive my spirit. I pray, I pray the prayer of Stephen. <laughs> Listen, and, I, and I'm saying to somebody this morning, you've got to live for God with everything. Amen. Don't live for God um, mediocrely. Like, you, you know, no man, live with God with everything. Live with God for everything. Sell out yourself for God and watch him. Listen, he will bring things to pass in your life. Believe you me, it's going to happen. Just 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 allow him this morning. And I just feel like I wanted to share, let everybody know that I'm doing good. I'm doing all right. I'm, I'm recovering slowly. Um, I can't preach for another few weeks, weeks, months. Oh, my God. So take it easy and getting better. And, yeah, that's, that's it. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. And amen. You know, I, I, I heard you the last time you preached at church, you know, I was saying to Gideon, because both of us sit at the back, and I'm saying to Gideon that, you know, I know you weren't preaching, you were like mostly teaching at the time. I'm saying, Gideon, you know, is only Pastor Clive knew that he had a commanding voice. He doesn't necessarily need to shout like other persons. Some persons have to put on a voice. They have to shout to have a commanding voice. And here we're here sitting and listening to you um, based on the situation that you're in now. You know, you're recovering, you know, as you said. And, you know, the, the just sharing a testimony, it came across as a very commanding one. A person's actually here listening and knowing that, you know, even though you're not at the full um, recovery, you're still impacting lives. And that's what it's all about us as believers. There are times when we use excuses not to, sh to, to, to do the work of the Lord. You know, we go through an uh, emotional breakdown or something just happened to us normal and we say, you know what, I'm going to quit church. I'm going to stop going to church. But here we see, you know, you coming down this morning. You didn't have to come down, but you made the sacrifice to be here and to be with us this morning. So I'm really thanking God for you being here 
Um, and I really thank God again for God using you and using you mightily. So let me pray for you this morning. I know it's normally the custom that normally whenever, you know, somebody comes on and they share, you know, I want the listeners to come in agreement this morning. We have been thinking about the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit leading us. And I felt led to pray. I'm, I was looking for a song, but... But Father, this morning, we thank you for Pastor Clive who made the, the sacrifice to be here to share this testimony. God, you reminded us this morning that you are our shepherd. You are his shepherd and he shall not want. Even though he walked through the valley of the shadow of death, he went close to death, but you kept him alive because there is a purpose on his life. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that as he's on this road of recovery, we pray in the name of Jesus that no weapon formed against him will be able to prosper. We pray, God, that you'll use him and use him mightily, even when he's on the phone talking to somebody. Even while he was in that theater, he was there ministering to the doctor. You know his heart this morning. God, protect him in this time of recovery. Let it be a speedy one. God, let your angels visit him while he's at home. Wherever he goes, Father, go with him. Strengthen him in his body. Flow through his body in a powerful way. God, give him the victory that belongs to him. Thank you, God, for his wife and his family who are supporting him in this time. God, continue to bless, heal, deliver, and set free your people in this season. Thank you, God, for his life again. Thank you, God, for allowing him to be here. We pray, God, that you'll remove every pain and he'll continue to give you the glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. And the listeners of HGG Radio, we come in agreement and we say amen and amen. We thank God for your life. We thank God for coming on this morning, Pastor Clive, mm -hmm. and sharing. I know any final words, anything you'd like to say to the listeners before you um, depart from us this morning? Amen. Just want to, as I said, man, just trust God. Just believe Him. Just, just trust God with everything. Trust God. There's so many things that are happening now in the world that is shaking a lot of persons at their faith. Mm -hmm. But you need to build that relationship with God. Build that relationship with God so you know who your God is and have a personal relationship with Him for yourself. Amen. 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 Again, thank you, Pastor Clive, for coming on and sharing Speedy Recovery. And we look forward to hearing from you very, very soon. And continue to do the work that God has called you to do. God says he has given you a commanding voice. Continue to use your voice. Even when you're going in a theater, I can see that man was just hooked. He was oh. just... <laughs> <laughs> you know, just just hearing the word of God, arresting this person. And that is what God has called you to do to impact lives and to impact the nations. Thank you so much, Pastor Clive. God bless you richly. Thank you so much. You're tuned to Higher Ground Gospel Radio. Stay tuned, my friends. There's a blessing with your name written on it. HGG Radio. against 
the wall, help me now. Jesus, may I call you, help me now. When my bills can't pay, Lord, help me now. When everybody can't let me, help me now. When the devil start fight me, help me now. Jesus, may I call you, help me now. I have known a little old lady in the country. She was so very sick, she could not help herself. But in the middle of the night, when the fear was left and right, the wall, help me now. Jesus, may I call you? Help me now. When my bills can't be Lord, help me now. When everybody gone, let me. Help me now. When the devil start fight me, help me now. Jesus, may I call you? Help me now. And get ready for Come Worship the King on April 6, 2024. Hosted by MR Productions. Come and experience the ultimate night of praise and worship featuring Petra K from Jamaica. Oh, I cross over. Michael Reed, oh, Chanel Edwards, cross. Glenn Barnes, and Pastor Alric O'Connor. Special appearances from Chosen Generation. And we are his. MC Crystal Reed at the Citadel International Church, 9253 48th Street, Edmonton. Gates open at 5.30 p.m. Showtime, 6 p.m. Adults pre-sold $35. $40 at the door. Kids, $15 at the door. Get your tickets at eventbrite.ca or call Call 780-284-3450. That's, That's Come, Come Worship, Worship the King, King Edmonton. Edmonton. See you there. there. When you see me smiling, you know I'm leaning on my God this morning. You're tuned to Higher Ground Gospel Radio. Just about 20 minutes approaching 8 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. Right here in the beautiful city of Edmonton. Just your morning is going well, my friends. Got favor of my life. Walking in purpose. Should I die, but I am still alive. I don't deserve it, but I receive it. Now lucky I'm blessed. Now worrying no more stress. My life is a miracle. miracle. Got favor of my life. Walking in 
Disability Empowerment Foundation in partnership with Great Commission Foundation presents Disability Awareness Musical Concert under the theme The Gifted and the Lifted at the Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG Champions Parish, 18811 111 Avenue, Edmonton, on Saturday, April 6, 2024, from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Admission free. That's the Disability, Disability Awareness, Awareness Musical, Musical Concert. Concert. April 6, 2024. See you there. Out of all the songs God has given me, I believe this might be my favorite. I want my friend body to come and sing this song. One time, one time, say. Okay, so you must say.
Calgary. Join us on April 5, 2024 for an evening of praise and worship presented by MR Productions featuring Petra K from Jamaica. Oh, I cross Michael Reed from Edmonton. I know I'm Rex Uche, Inheritance Group, and Showers of Blessings Praise Team, live in concert. Doors open at 6.30 p.m., showtime 7 p.m. at the Southeast Hope Assembly, 520 60th Avenue, Southeast Calgary. Adults pre-sold $35, $40 at the door. Kids, $15 at the door. Get your tickets at eventbrite.ca or call 780-284. 3450. That's come worship the king. Calgary. See you there. My soul is Praise the Lord and God bless you. Pastor Rod Charles here from Bethel Apostolic Stony Plain. We want to welcome you to revival that is happening in the house. March 23rd and 24th, Rise Up Revival is coming to the house of Bethel, and you have to be there. There's going to be worship. Amen. There is going to be deliverance. And most of all, we're going to hear a word from Elder J.G. Williams. And if you want to be a part of that renewal and refreshing, you have to be here. Remember, March 23rd and 24th, you have to be in the house so that the Lord can bless you. God bless you. Make sure that you're here. Bring your outreach and evangelistic teams and register online at www.bacsp.ca. God bless you, and I love you. This will be at 501251 Avenue, Stony Plain, Alberta. For more information, visit their website at www.bacsp. Disability Empowerment Foundation, in partnership with Great Commission Foundation, presents Disability Awareness Musical Concert under the theme The Gifted and the Lifted at the Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG Champions Parish, 18811 111 Avenue, Edmonton, on Saturday, April 6, 2024, from 1 p.m to 4 p.m. Admission free. That's the Disability, Disability Awareness, Awareness Musical, Musical Concert, Concert April, April 6, 6, 2024. See you there. Push it up, 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 up. Glory. 
Our morning show is sponsored by All Style Construction for all your general construction needs, commercial and residential cabinet making. Visit their website allstyleconstruction.ca or give them a call at 780-484-8885. You're tuned to Higher Ground Gospel Radio. The time is now 8 o'clock. At this time, you're now invited to listen to the program Expectation with Pastor Dean A. Brown of the Christ Alive Christian Center, 4217 to 19 Vario Avenue, Bronx, New York, USA. Welcome to the Expectation Broadcast, the radio outreach of Christ Alive Christian Center with Pastor and Teacher Dean A. Brown. Please stay tuned to the end of the broadcast for more information. And now your host, Pastor Dean A. Brown, with today's teaching. That he might sanctify and cleanse her, referring to the church and Jesus, with the what? Washing of water by the word. With the washing of water by the word. So a person who submits to Jesus, a person who submits to Christ through the word for salvation. Come on now. A person who submits to Christ through the word of God to receive salvation has been sprinkled with clean water. Amen? Glory to God. They accepted Christ as Savior. They receive a new spirit. They're born again. See, the first one, when you're unsaved, was dead to God. So now, just like Jesus resurrected from the dead, when you get born again, your spirit becomes alive, alive, alive unto God. So you have within you as a believer, a living spirit, Jesus of mercy, with the capacity, you ready for this? To contain God, Jesus, to commune with God. Wow. We are made clean. And we are kept clean as we accept the word and live by the word. So if you're not born again, you don't have the capacity in you to know God. You know, sometimes you hear sinners talk about people talk about, you know, you know, um, you know, I know God. No, you don't. A lot, a lot of what happens to you is covered by a verse of scripture that says, God sends the rain on the just and the unjust. And some of it is a benefit of the prayers of people who love you. But if you're not born again, you can claim you know God all you want to. But when you die, you'll find out you didn't know him. And he's going to tell you he didn't know you either. Because there's a misconception and the church has been guilty of pushing this lie. That every human being is a child of God. That's a lie. The Bible calls us the creation of God, every human being. The only people that is called the children of God, those that are born again. And when you go into the New Testament, I don't have time to go into this, Paul speaking, you know, he doesn't even, he doesn't even deal, with, God doesn't even deal with us, you know, black, white, yellow, red, whatever. He classifies three classes of people on the earth. No, God is conscious of all the natural separations. We understand that. But he classifies man in three categories, Jew, Gentile, and Church of God. Go look it up. Just go to Google, put in Jew, Gentile, Church of God. They bring you to the verse. Okay? Three. Jew, Gentile, Church of God. Now, Church of God refers to the born again believers. Gentile refers to everybody that's non Jew, but in the context of that scripture, that's not born again. And Jew, biological offspring. Of Abraham. And let me tell you something, folks. Let me tell you something. Don't you be foolish enough to think that God is done with the offspring of Abraham. There are prophecies yet to be fulfilled concerning the natural, natural offspring of Abraham. Mashka Sotoria Makashia. See, sometimes that's why when people say things. I just wonder to myself, do they understand how limiting 
those statements may be. See, just because something has truth in it doesn't mean it is completely true. Amen? Paul, in reasoning with the church at Rome, makes a statement where he says, we, the church, born-again believers, we were grafted in. And we better be careful we don't mess up to be cut off. But the scripture clearly gives us understanding of an end time manifestation of God that is going to result in many natural Jews getting saved. Now, there are many that are saved today. And you know, we, whether you understand or not, the moment the Jew gets saved, they move from the Jew category to the church of God category. Now, we're not talking about the natural, now we're talking about the spiritual. You, you understand? Jew, Gentile, church of God. So that's why I'm not a believer, and I understand the natural use of the term, but I'm not a believer in black church. That's why I don't preach black-centric gospel. I preach the gospel. <laughs> Amen? So, number one, cleansing by what? Clean water. Number two, your spiritual nature is changed. Look at verse 26, Ezekiel 36. Your spiritual nature is what? Changed. Amen? Because this Holy Spirit in conversion or in the new birth changes you. But I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. Conversion. The word conversion, be converted. The words new birth, okay? You know, the word saved, they're different terms but the same experience. Okay? So, so when you're born again, there's a new power in you. Come on now. That empowers you to walk in God's way and keep God's word. But you have to cooperate. Amen? Let me give you an example. The, the, the newborn believer has been empowered to walk in love. Has been empowered to do what? Walk in love. And this Oh, Lord, now, I'm going to, I mentioned it Wednesday night, but I'm going to get in trouble with the rest of you all now. This law of love empowers us to live out the Ten Commandments. But the Ten Commandments are not for saved people, for unsaved people. That's a dean. That's sacrilegious, is it? Who did God give the Ten Commandments to? Huh? He gave it through Moses to who? To who? Were they born again? Yes or no? Were they born again? No. No, they were not. Amen? I mean, you know, I, I always tell people, let's use the Bible, not religiosity. All right? Listen to this. John 13, 35. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have what? Love one for another. Matthew 22. If you have what? Love one for another. Matthew 22, starting at verse 34. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Sadducees, Pharisees, two sects with S-E-C-T-S within the context of Jewish uh, traditional religion. And they had different viewpoints on some, uh, some things. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Woo! It's a big question. There are tons of commandments. Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Note he started with the spirit first. All right. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now read out loud for me verse 40, please. On these two commandments, hang what? 
all the law and the prophet. So there are only two commandments that the newborn believer needs to live. Love God with all your heart, all your soul, all of you, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Because in doing that, you will not worship an idol. You will not murder anybody. You will not covet anything. You will not steal anything because those two will keep them all. So every single commandment under the old covenant is fulfilled in those two, including Sabbath laws. Shoo! The Sabbath law is a separate commandment from those two. So all these people telling you if you don't worship on Saturday, you're not worshiping on the Sabbath. Foolishness. Because in walking in love and loving God, I'm fulfilling every sick. You can't erase those words from the scripture. On these two commandments hang everyone. They're automatically fulfilled in the law of love. You know why God had to give the Ten Commandments to the Jewish people? Because they didn't know how to live right. He had to give them individual one by one law. Did you know that the Bible has laws? You remember about Ivan 9242? You want to live under that today? Because if you're going to insist that I keep Sabbath laws, then I'm going to insist that you keep them all. No, the, the Bible, for example, oh, Jesus, I'm going to get myself in trouble with some of you holy people now. The Bible, for example, right? The Bible, for example, has some strict things that would happen if a man violated a woman. He could get castrated. I was sharing that recently, and somebody said, bring it back, Lord, bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was online reading this week. And popped up were these memorable moments that preachers have experienced. So let me read this one to you. I was preaching, it's a youth minister, youth, youth, youth service. I was preaching about law versus grace. And used Deuteronomy 23, 12 to 14 as an example for crazy laws. So you're going to keep all the laws? You got to keep Thank you for listening to the Expectation Broadcast. Expectation is an outreach ministry of Christ Alive Christian Center and Dean Brown Ministries located in the Bronx, New York. If you would like to receive a free copy of the message you have just heard or any other message that is broadcast here on Expectation, email your request to ChristAliveRadio at Yahoo.com. Again, that's ChristAliveRadio at Yahoo.com. Dot com. The motto and the theme of our ministry is empowering people to be a blessing in their generation. And so we believe that in listening to the messages, you will be empowered and you will be blessed in order to be a blessing to others. If you'd like more information about Christ Alive and Dean Brown Ministries, simply go to our website, ChristAlive.org. Again, that's ChristAlive.org. Dot org. There you will also find links that will allow you to watch our services as well as to listen to past messages. You can download the app or you can go to our podcast. So many different ways that you can hear the wonderful messages that God has placed in our hearts to share with you. Not only messages that I preach are available through the website, but also messages that have been taught by all the wonderful gifts of God that God has placed in our midst or who have come to be a blessing in our church. Again, you can receive a free copy of the message by emailing us at ChristAliveRadio at Yahoo.com. Keep this thought in mind. Without expectation, there can be no manifestation because your expectation is your faith in action. God bless. Thank you for listening to the program Expectation with Pastor Dean A. Brown of the Christ Alive Christian Center, 4217 to 19 Vario Avenue.